Hello everybody, I hope you're doing well since we last communicated. Now today I just want to share some thoughts with you regarding a piece of proposed legislation by the Irish government which is currently making its way through the Doyle legislative process. And it's a bill entitled the Criminal Justice Incitement to Violence or Hatred and Hate Offences Bill of 2022. Now I want to keep this video short so I'm just going to concentrate on four main issues that I think we need to be very concerned about as follows. Now, what this proposed bill will do is essentially uh, provide for two categories of offences. One is the offence of hate speech and the other is a brand new category of hate crime. Now, what many people may not realise is that we already have legislation on our statute books which deals with uh, the offence of hate speech. It is an act that goes back to 1989. Now, what this government proposes to do is to repeal that legislation, take the elements of it, um, of the existing legislation, enhance it and put it into a brand new bill with this new category of hate crime. So why are they doing that? Well, they're doing it because they cannot get enough convictions under the existing legislation. So the question that has to be asked is, why would a government want to introduce legislation which will result in more criminal convictions against its own people. So that's the first question that you might uh, like to ask yourselves now. And this existing legislation that we have dealing with hate speech essentially meets all of our international requirements with one exception. We are obliged to introduce measures to deal with issues such as genocide and war crimes and all that is required to comply with the EU framework directive which deals with that is to have a simple amendment to the existing legislation. Once we do that, we then have complied with all of our international obligations. Another issue which arises with regard to the hate speech aspect of this new bill is the fact that it's widely touted that this new bill will provide robust safeguards for freedom of expression. That is what is described on the Department of Justice website. Well, I can assure you as a lawyer and as a former criminal prosecutor, it does no such thing. There is a single sentence containing four lines in a single section, it's section 11. You may want to read it for yourselves. And this section is vague, it lacks clarity and it lacks definition. So that's the first issue that I wanted to bring to your attention. Now, the second issue is this, who decided and on what basis was it decided that we needed a brand new category of crime in Ireland called hate crime? That's a question that requires to be answered and it hasn't been answered to date satisfactorily. Now, what does this new legislation propose with regard to the hate crime aspect? Well, what it does is provide a special status of protection for those members of minority groups who have what are known as protected characteristics. And these characteristics are those of race, nationality, descent, gender, disability, sexual orientation, etc. So it means that if crimes are committed against minority groups who have these protected characteristics, those crimes will be known and categorized as hate crimes and they will carry an increased or an enhanced penalty. Now, a number of issues arise with regard to this proposed legislation. And the first one is this. There is no definition of hatred in this proposed legislation. The second issue, which I think we need to consider is this. Why should people having protected characteristics require special protection in the first place? You may very well ask, are they not already protected under the law? And the answer is yes, they are. They enjoy the same status and the same protections as the rest of us. In addition, judges already have inherent powers when sentencing offenders to take into account any aggravating factors. So that's the second issue that I wanted to bring to your attention. And the third issue is this. This new proposed legislation will create a hierarchy of justice. In other words, there will be two tiers of victims. So why should a crime committed against a member of a minority group be greater than a crime committed against a member of a majority group? What therefore is the point in having policies on 
integration and diversity. Um, in fact, I will go so far as to say that this proposed legislation manifestly undermines uh, this government's uh, policy with regard to integration and diversity and inclusiveness. Now, I'm not suggesting for one moment that there is no such thing as hatred or racism or that it should be condoned in any way. It manifestly should not. However, as I've previously indicated, there are already protections in place to deal with that. Another issue of concern to me and many others is the fact that members of minority groups who will now have an enhanced status or protection under the law, that this will result in them being more isolated and marginalized as many people may resent their special protected status. So this legislation is very likely to have a polarizing effect on society, and that is not a very enlightened policy. Now that's the third issue that I want to deal with. The fourth issue is this. In the proposed legislation, there is a much touted objective demonstration test which has been brought in for the purpose of securing more convictions. And what this means is that you have a base offence, which if it's accompanied by words or gestures or slurs, which could be construed as being motivated by hatred, then that person will be convicted of, of a hate offence with the attendant consequences. So to give you an example of how this might play out, let's say we have a young Irish person and they're out for a night out with their friends. They're in a pub or they're in a nightclub and they get involved in an altercation with one or more members of a minority group who have these protected characteristics. Let's say, for example, it's a non-national. So there's heated exchanges, you know, and there may or may not be provocation. Uh, there could be assaults. Harsh words are spoken in the heat of the moment. And if those words could be construed as constituting a uh, hatred of any kind, then that young person, if the matter is reported, may find themselves embroiled potentially in a prosecution for a hate crime offence. Now, if the weight of the evidence is against them, they will be convicted of a hate crime offence. And for example, if the offence is a serious one of assault, that could mean up to seven years imprisonment. Now, in addition to that, a conviction for a hate crime, uh, they will have the stigma of having been convicted of a hate crime for the rest of their lives. So I don't think I need to spell out the consequences of that. Now that young person could be your son, it could be your nephew, it could be your brother. So another aspect of this legislation which concerns myself and many others is that it totally fails to provide for any nuance, personality, context, uh, cultural differences between people and this will inevitably lead to misinterpretation and confusion and chaos which will affect all of us. So to conclude this legislation, this proposed legislation by the Irish government is one, unnecessary, two, it's unworkable, three, it's uh, essentially serves and provides a risk of entrapment to potentially innocent people who genuinely have no hatred or feel no hatred towards any members of minority groups who uh, have these protected characteristics, but they will become entrapped by this legislation. Fourthly, there is no mandate from the Irish people for this legislation. So if you are a public representative, before you make a decision to vote in favour of this legislation, please consult with your constituents and ask them for their view before you subject them and their children and generations to come to a potentially punitive legal process, which is not for their benefit. Thank you for listening. Until next time, namaste.